Diane, I knew you would put on makeup and look all beautiful. And I'm like, I'm seriously in pajama pants for this one. <laughs> I was like, I bet Diane's going to do her hair for this. I'm like, dang it. Uh, I did. I can't help myself. <laughs> all right. What I'm just waiting a few minutes for everybody to join. I'm going to go and turn this off here and on my video and just wait for everybody. Okay. Really, I'm doing it because I'm going to yell at my dogs real quick. <laughs> <'Cause they're being laughs> What's new with you, Diane? Oh, I'm getting, I'm kind of getting ready for this first WAC committee. Meeting. Yeah. That is coming up April 8th. It rather scares me and it should. You know, there's like 28 people. I won't yeah. get a chance to get word in edgewise. I'll have to be, I, I, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Well, you know, there, won't be a good outcome no matter what. So, know. you know, we, yeah. So, there, there's a, um, my son in law is chainsawing in the orchard outside oh. my window. If, if, and he's chainsawing now, is, can you guys hear that? Is that going to disrupt nope, anything? I can't hear it. Okay, good. I was hoping yeah. I couldn't. Nope, I can't. What's new with you, Melissa? Uh, I drove my friend was staying with me from from India, surprised me on my birthday and flew all the way from yeah. India to surprise me for the my birthday. And so I've been eating. Oh, what is this? How do I get my camera, which is on to connect with you guys? Sorry, I'm just helping somebody. Um, no try Kelly, try hitting stop video and then restarting it. Um, on the bottom. Let me screen share. Hang on. Oh, shit. Shoot. I mean, sorry. God, I've got a mouth. <laughs> you can swear. I just can't help it. It's like every day I'm like, maybe I can go one day without dropping an F bomb in an inappropriate situation, but I've not done it yet. I've not been able to do it. Um, let's see here. Share screen. Kelly, I'm trying. So. Okay. Um. Is that my, okay. So Kelly, if you go, how do I make this big now? Shoot, I don't know if I can do it right. Um, do you see that up there? Like, do you see what I'm doing here? You could put stop video and then it'll say join video. You can do it just right there, if that helps. I'll try to chat you. When, uh, I'll get you started once we get everybody on because Diane and I don't have to do all the talking. I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing my voice. I am. So <laughs> there we go. So all right. There. Yeah, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. I like, I don't know why. Every day mm -hmm. I've, I tried one day, a whole day to not swear and I could not do it. My dad bit me $50 and I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? Well, look at the people we have to deal with sometimes, you know. So fucking idiots, see? Yeah. <laughs> I say it all the time, so don't worry about that. I was just telling some of our, some of our uh, board members, uh, Pat specifically, I was giving him some hints on uh, what to say to this a person in the DNR, and I was like, by the way, don't forget to put P.S. <laughs> <laughs> from Melissa. I was uh, on the phone yesterday. I'm just waiting for people to join everybody. I don't, yeah, we've got a little time. Yeah, it's just two minutes before. Mm -hmm. I was on the phone with Jim Brandenburg yesterday for an hour. And I had him laughing so hard that he put him me on speakerphone with his wife because I was telling him about the time that I testified at a natural resource board meeting. 
And then when I went up there, I just started cramming donuts in my mouth and then trying to speak with the mouth in my mouth. I have a flair for the dramatic. I think you guys know that. And I was like, so then I finished it and they're like, excuse me. And they all stared at me. That's when David Clausen from last week was laughing about. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Did, did you guys not want to have some of my bear bait? Like I did it as a stunt. I laughed. I, I think that girl Kelly is still having a hard time. Oh shit. Sorry. Okay. Getting on. Oh, now she got it. She got she it. Okay. Great. You just said now she we got can it. see her. Okay. Let's see. Yay. There she is with the wolf. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Yeah, so we were we were laughing quite a bit about about my uh, antics I occasionally have. Well, did, uh, I just did Jim, like when you're, did when Jim you're have biased. anything interesting to say about our situation here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he, you know, this is another one of those things why it's so important to get all of our stuff into the media. Even Jim Brandenburg, right? Like National Geographic wolf photographer. We all know he got his heart broken in all of his books. He didn't know until this hunt that you could use dogs. And he, you know, he's in our world. So I thought that that was really an interesting thing that he told me that it wasn't because of all of our letters and all of our push that, you know, he just finds it absolutely appalling. Just appalling. It's disgusting. Like any human being with a heart would. It's not a tough sell but whatever. Uh, yeah, it was really interesting. And he was telling me um, just other things about, well, he's giving me a lot of dirt on some people I asked him about, but other than that, <laughs> just, you know, how just dumb it all is. And I mean, he made me cry. And then I, you know, I felt embarrassed. He's like, don't be, you know, he, he went through the same thing. It feels like a personal loss. You know well, I, mean? I, I still have a lot of trouble even going to sleep at night because I'm still envisioning the rest of the wolves that are up there on their own with their packs fractured and yeah, well, how they're, how uh, they're, it's up you to know, Pat. I don't want to put him on the spot here. We found that out today that Pat that's on this has some property and he's known these wolves and seven of nine were, were uh, killed in the hunt with dogs and the remaining two just killed a calf today. Oh, crap. Which is bad news. So uh, I don't want to start crying about it either. But, um, you know, we, so I don't worry. I've got a scathing ass letter to the scathing letter to the editor. Uh, I was typing it when I was waiting for the meeting. So basically, I want to be like, you know, well, we can talk about it when more people join. But I think we need to make sure to keep this in the media because they never keep talking about these lasting effects of what they just did. And I'm going to write a thing that says Hunter Nation's open second hunt on farmers. That's the title of it now. Because you did. Because you fractured all these animals and what are they supposed to do? You know what I mean? So that's, I guess that's, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, we've got to, got to keep going even though it's, I mean, you know, each new each new day <laughs> each new day is a new horror it feels like unfortunately but um you know just making sure people understand the effect that you know documenting these effects i'm sure of it i'm sure that it's those remaining two wolves and i'm sure they did it because they were desperate they never had i checked all the way back they've never been had a they never depredated on a farm in the whole time that pack existed or at least in the area where we think you know what I mean but I'm sure that's why I bet it I bet it was two younger wolves maybe or maybe like a maybe maybe the alpha pyramid no because the collared female was killed so you know they lost their leader they lost the, their leadership what are they gonna do so I don't give a shit about them killing god Melissa I get so mad you guys I'm sorry but you know what well, what did you expect was going to happen? You knew this. So I think this is, you know, as much as I hate to say it, I just try to find the silver lining on every, every horror story is there you go. You proved it. Generalized wolf hunting increases depredations on livestock. Now we have it and we have an actual hard evidence case of it. So as much as I hate it and I don't want it to exist, at least it's proving what we were all saying, what we all said when they said we were being too emotional or that it wouldn't affect the wolves long term when and they called bullshit on us. Well, now I feel like, yeah, I, we told you so. Okay, so what can be done in Wisconsin for this next hunt that's supposed to be coming up in November? That's what we're trying to stop. Okay. 
So that's why I'm here because I work, I'm a volunteer for the HSUS. Oh, wonderful. Okay. And, and I wrote a letter to the La Crosse Tribune because I'm in that yeah. area, that side of the state. Um, and I, you know, I, I've been trying to do what I can. Sure. Um, but like you said, I think we really still need to keep it in the media, whatever we have yep. to do continually. <clears throat> put it out there. But again, I'm trying to think because I, I, I was on that DNR bullshit meeting. Yeah. When they, See my bad influence on everyone. No, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm a really bad swearer. So, yeah, yeah. You know. um, but again, there's got to be so, some way. We need to get, you know, tribal members or somebody. We need to get some of these people as well into the DNR or, or have more say or something. I mean, yeah, and so you can kind of catch up on those, what we're working towards right now. So I've got two guest speakers. And I just okay. need three guest speakers. I'm just trying to be mindful of time, but that's okay. We okay. usually start about five after, but we are building up. So first we learn, you know, in the next uh, coming up soon is the next NRB meeting. We are going to go there and they don't know that we're coming. Okay to ask to hold, hold them accountable. I think if they see this, I don't know that we can stop the hunt. Of course, we're gonna try, but I think they need to know they messed up bad and that they're gonna be, we're gonna humiliate them. I mean, I'm not saying we're not, we're gonna be professional and nice, but I think if 50 wildlife lovers show up to a meeting unexpected, that's gonna send a very powerful message. The media is always at those meetings. Oh, okay. They're always there. So we're just developing our stories and our testimony. Where is that meeting held? It will be on Zoom. So that's the really good news. Oh, good. Okay. 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 Yeah. Good. So, and I think they probably will be um, probably April, May. I don't, maybe they'll start opening things up in June. I don't know. But yeah, so last last week we had the former Natural Resource Board Chair, Dave Clausen, speak to us, which was kind of depressing and a little down, but whatever. we just add more things um, and we are working on getting a, a more wildlife and wolf friendly person appointed into the seats at the natural resource board uh, as those are expiring. Okay, yeah. good. So we're doing lots and we're, uh, lots of other stuff in the background litigation. I met with legislators um, on Tuesday and asked my Senator to sponsor a wolf amendment bill. It also won't go anywhere, but just thinking of ways to keep this moving and so that they know they they crossed the tipping point. They did it. They pushed us all into so mad that we're not do going. You have a copy. I mean, do you have like a general letter that you sent to your senator, or was it something? No, I that... just called. Okay. Yeah, and okay. that was a great letter to the editor that you wrote. We all read it, so we thought it was okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Well, I am gonna. We are gonna do more question and answer. Like okay. at the end, I just want to be respectful of Diane's time because she oh, worked really hard on this. So tonight, guys, the, there's two things coming up. We know that Natural Resource Board meeting, but there's also something called the Wisconsin Conservation Congress. And a lot of people don't know about it. I didn't know about it until I ran for it. And I was on the Conservation Congress for 10 years and I did my 10. <laughs> and now Diane is on it. Um, and we do need more. We definitely need more wildlife, pro-wildlife people on there. Unfortunately, there's no election this year because of COVID. But you can, I'm, I guess I'm just going to turn it over to Diane. Uh, she's going to just talk to you all, all about it, the processes. And that meeting is also coming up in three weeks. We've got, we've got three weeks to prep for both these things. So I'm going to shut up, which has never happens, by using my mute and let Diane have it. Well, thank you, Melissa. Uh, well, thanks for inviting me uh, to speak this fireside chat. Uh, this me meeting's presentation is a collaborative effort between Jean Voss and myself. And Jean Voss, I have to give her credit for about 85% of the really good tips you're going to hear today. Jean is a savvy wildlife advocate. She's attuned to red flags that she sees and doing the research in order to facilitate the awareness of us all. So we make a really big deal about voting in our elections for president, the Senate, the school board, judges, but nobody pays attention to elections on behalf of wildlife and the natural world. This is our chance to have input about wildlife, woods, water, and wetlands. So there's some acronyms I'll use for this talk. Um, WCC, that means Wisconsin Conservation Congress. NRB, Natural Resources Board. 
and DNR is Department of Natural Resources. I know that's elementary for a lot of you, but you know, it, it isn't for everybody. And a lot of people aren't familiar with the WCC at all. So Wisconsin is the only state in this country that is funded to elect delegates. And so that means we're paying for this um, from a cross section of outdoor enthusiasts to ensure our natural world is represented by all citizens. WCC is the only advisory board to the NRB. The NRB is the right arm of DNR policy making regarding all of our natural resources. So this all happened. The WCC happened back in the 1930s when Eldo Leopold, among other conservationists, recognized the need to protect our natural resources and wildlife from being used as a political pawn. Obviously, this hasn't worked out very well. Um, in the wake of the decimation of bison, elk, turkeys, beaver, cougar, fisher, wolverine, marten, passenger pigeons, and of course our wolves in the early 1800s to early night in the 1800s to early 1900s, for market hunting, sport, and of course predator vilification, the citizen group called the WCC, Wisconsin Conservation Congress, was formed. Five delegates are elected from each of the 72 counties. There's three ways for you to have your say at the WCC spring hearings. And that's your moment when you have a chance to do this. Run for the position of delegate in your county. So this year, <clears throat> because of COVID, um, there really aren't the elections as, as there usually are. Uh, submit a resolution to your county uh, per survey monkey. Answer the spring questionnaire questions using the online option. Wisconsin residents can express support or non-support for a wide range of proposed rule changes and advisory questions on natural resource management issues through the virtual DNR spring hearings and Conservation Congress annual meetings held every in every county um, normally when they're um, in person, but now they're beginning Monday, April 12th, starting at 7 p.m. And the online questionnaire will be available for 72 hours. Use the link to the online questions, DNR Wisconsin Gov search um, spring hearings. Then you can also find dnrwisconsin.gov delegate resources 2020. Re results of the public's input on these proposals will be presented to the NRB in June of 2021. So it's a big deal. If there is support for a proposal, the advisory question could become a DNR rule proposal in the following years. This year, the Conservation Congress will seek public input on 27 advisory questions on a range of topics. Some of these include, firstly, a proposal to allow the hunting of white deer, not albino deer. So true albinos have pink eyes, nose, and ears. So good luck with this. If hunters can't tell elk from deer, good luck with them picking out a pink nose before they shoot. Um, a proposal to allow dogs off leash on state lands, including a study on testing bird, on nesting birds. Uh, currently, they require an eight foot leash for training, training and hunting dogs only for the time period from April 15th to July 31st. Well, of course they wanna get rid of that. Uh, and, and if you get rid of it, then we should have concerns about free ranging dogs at a time when young wildlife is out and about and in addition to the nesting birds. Um, the term study seems innocuous enough, seems harmless, but it's a path to continue this. Uh, with hunting allowed in our state parks and trails, April 1st to early May, hounds running loose would be disruptive to those who are hoping to quietly recreate on our state owned lands. Nature walkers, they're out and about hiking with their leashed pets. This is a time when families get out. It's a time of heavy use with families. And you have these dogs running around um, that are in training. So of course, a couple of the sponsors, this won't be a surprise to you, are Wisconsin Bear Hunters Association and Wisconsin Coon Hunters Association. No surprise there for people wanting to extend their time uh, for their free ranging dogs. <clears throat> Thirdly, extending seasons for squirrel hunting through February, lengthening beaver and otter trapping seasons, um, extend season for trapping fox, coyote, and bobcat by cable restraints. So those are just a few. Those are five. There's, there's a lot more. 
um, you have options of yes or no, or for some of these questions, there's no good option. In that case, you have no opinion. <clears throat> Another good tip from Jean, liking the Wisconsin Conservation Congress Facebook page. Never thought to do that. It gives you really important updates. For example, it will tell you there's a bill in progress right now that gives hunters, trappers, and fishermen access to railroad tracks to cross public, uh, public lands. That was based on a previously passed WCC resolution. Um, Wisconsin already has roughly 5.7 acres of hunting land that includes most of our state parks and trails. Posts like this tip us off to contact our reps and let them know why these ideas might not be as good as they sound before they blindly co-sponsor. Um, things like safety, rural trespass issues, loss of revenue for parks, railroad company liability. They should think about all those, but I'm not sure they always do. Um, participating in the WCC process gives a person a front row seat. You see the firsthand the dysfunction of the WCC current structure and of policies that should not exist. And I bet Melissa thinks that too. For example, if a delegate wanted to serve on the Bear Committee, and I thought I should be on this, I could make a difference. Well, you gotta like all legal methods for hunting the black bear. It includes training season for hounds, hunting with the aid of hounds, use of hounds and bait, the ability to use bait. And it says all the methods. What more could there be? Anyway, on I go with. Um, so the qualifier for this committee assignment runs contrary to the idea that all delegates are candidates for any of the WCC committees. It's a good example of just how entrenched the WCC has become with catering to special groups and it hadn't ought to be. It's supposed to represent all of us. Tony Blattler, chair of the WCC says uh, Conservation Congress advisory questions generally originate from citizen ideas. Last year, there were 200 resolutions submitted. They don't all pass, but they have, the, if they do pass, the ones that do pass, do have the potential to become a rule policy or legislative change. Remember, our legislators are involved with all of this in the subsequent years, Blattler says. So anyone submitting a resolution must do so online There's, um, by April 5th. Not a lot of time to do that. The resolution writing instructions and the link for submitting a resolution are available online. I've submitted mine. Uh, mine is a term limit for the WCC Advisory Committee. My thought there is maybe if we can not have them have a lifetime sentence to do this, that maybe they, you know, maybe some of us will have a chance. That's my thought process. Of course, it won't work. Um, some are submitting resolutions limiting bear baiting. That starts April 15th. Some are, limit, are submitting resolutions banning bear hound training, which starts July 1st, or banning nighttime wolf hunting, which just seems awful to me. Um, out of state citizens may vote. Um, there isn't any age restriction. You can encourage family and friends to vote. However, only Wisconsin residents um, may author the resolutions. A resolution is posted in the um, author's county for a vote in April. Be sure not to overlook voting on the resolutions, which is a separate section from the main questionnaire. If you don't look careful, you can miss it. So in 2019, um, uh, 10,700 um, 10, people voted. In, 2000, in 2020, 65,000 people voted in 2020. It was kind of an influx of hunters voting online. So things got past like spring bear hunting. I mean, people voted positively in favor of that. So that's why you really near a turnout on, on voting. I think probably some hunting magazine said for hunters to do it or something. You should encourage everyone to submit two resolutions if they're willing to do so. You have the option to post the same resolution in another county if the author can find a person to sign the resolution as it was written by them. Um, the wording really shouldn't be altered. This is really totally legit and custom, customary. It might sound like we're being sneaky, but we're not. Um, know that if resolutions of the same kind are passed at the county level and then vetted by an advisory committee meeting, the committee reserves the right to not hear all the authors. Authors should contact one another and allow the stronger speaker 
um, to have the floor. Written public commentary on a resolution of the same kind is accepted. Um, request that the written commentary be read at the meeting. You gotta request these things, you gotta spell out to them or they don't do it. When writing a resolution, um, because there's a new way of submitting it this year, this survey monkey thing. So when writing it, craft the resolution uh, before opening up the DNR WCC website designed to submit the resolution. Um, type up your resolution, carefully edit it, and then copy and paste it on the survey monkey form. Um, so this mechanism is, is a change. I did it though, and it worked fine. Um, Keep in mind that all wording in your resolution will be scrutinized by the advisory committee vetting it. You'll be assigned to one of 24 advisory committees, um, depending on what your resolution is on. Um, the claims and the content most likely will be challenged. Prepare yourself for that. Um, if your resolution claims, for example, that there were 33 um, wildlife killing contest this year, you better have proof that there are because they'll call you out on it. Um, occasionally, it might just maybe say there's numerous wildlife killing contests rather than being specific, kind of keeps you out of trouble. Uh, when claiming that hunters and trappers engage in certain activities, you might want to use the word some hunters or some trappers, just again, stay out of trouble. Houndsmen resent being called hounders. I've done that. I kind of had fun doing it, but, but they don't like it. So to avoid hunters serving on a committee from taking your resolution off topic, refer to them as houndsmen in the resolution. And I refer to them as something, Diane, but not that. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm, I'm bad. Don't That's do right. as I say. No. Do as I say now. <laughs> <laughs> And advisory committees tend to resist the proposal of more regulations. The go-to tactic used by some com committee members is to reject your resolution. They say it's just too hard for law enforcement to enforce. If your resolution proposes a new regulation, include how the regulation might be enforced. Um, if another state has the regulation which you propose, note that the regulation worked in that state. On the flip side, be prepared for an advisory committee to flip that around on you, turn it around. They'll say, oh, that might be fine for your state. This is Wisconsin. The WCC promoted the, hill, the hunt for sandhill cranes by comparing the success in other states. When, uh, when an example of how banning toxic chocolate and bear baits in other states never didn't really affect the success rate of the hunters in those states, the advisory committee rejected the comparison by saying, well, this is Wisconsin, not the other states. Always be prepared for the committee to use double standards and remind, but call them out on it. Depending on your topic, if there might be a perceived economic impact on your proposal, mention that. If it's not possible, there's these limited word restriction things, then be prepared to include a word about it at the advisory committee meeting where you'll have your your big opportunity to be famous. Um, the, the format for submitting your resolutions on the line does only allow script. So be sure to save your sources like graphs, charts, and articles in case your resolution does get advanced outside of your county. Uh, so keep that. Authors are allowed to email supporting evidence to committee members prior to meetings or presented at the meeting, you got to remember you're, you're really only allotted three minutes to present your pro proposal. So, you know, I've submitted it ahead, hoping they read it. Um, encourage others to provide written supportive testimony to the committees before the written commentary deadline and insist that it be read before the committee. Again, call them out on that if it's not happening. Keep your resolution as professional as possible. Avoid interjecting emotion. If the proposal focuses on a cruel practice, refrain from using words like heartbreaking, gut-wrenching, unforgivable. Instead, describe in limited yet descriptive detail how bones were crushed, body parts were shut off, shot off, etc. You can be graphic. Um, so let's see. 
ask others to review your resolution before you submit it. If, if there's any red flags, you know, don't get ticked off at, at your person that's reading it. If they say, well, you know, I don't think this is such a good plan or can you reword it? Um, that makes for a stronger resolution. So don't get offended by somebody that critiques it. I never accept criticism well, so I, but, but I have to suck it up for things like this. This past year, the WCC failed to either notify authors at least on one occasion or gave very short notice on on other occasions like a couple days that advisory meeting would be in session to vet the specific resolutions remain vigilant check the meeting pages of the wcc with frequency to allow yourself otherwise you're going to be like not showing up and then that doesn't work either um, you have a chance to review past resolutions to familiarize yourself with the process of the WCC as it relates to resolutions. It's kind of fun to look at all those old ones. You can go back a ways from 2020 and, and, and all the way down to a ways of years beyond. Diane, I don't, I don't, I'm, Diane, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but uh, we are posting our my like resolutions I've written in the past since oh, I've, right. I've got 10. We're going to post those. Uh, I'm going to ask for it too, but uh, post some samples in that advocacy tools section as well. So you can kind of see past resolutions. So we do have a few, I think, samples about killing contests and about hounding and about wolf hunting. Just sorry, just wanted to throw that out there just to make oh, it no, easier. Anytime. You're the boss, Melissa. You know that. And that's a really good idea. That'll be helpful. Um, so, um, delegate eligibility uh so any citizen of the county that you're in who is able to represent the citizens of wisconsin a delegate must be a wisconsin resident you um, have to be an adult at least 18 a resident of the county uh you wish to represent um there's there's meetings there's numerous meetings um there's only there's a couple district meetings per year one in march and one in august but you won't be fired if you don't attend um, I think I attended one my first year and then of course COVID hit. Um, counties with delegate openings and, and this is another gene find here. Um, they include Ashland, Brown, Burnett, Crawford, Douglas, Green Lake, Lincoln, Marinette, Menominee, Oconto, Marquette, Ozaki, Price, Rust, Sawyer, Taylor, Vernon, Racine, Forest, St. Croix and Washburn. Not all these delegates seats get filled not everybody wants to be on that you know it's and, and it's your chance to kind of jump in if you live in any of these counties you could ask the chairman of the um in that county that you reside in so you say you'd like to be a delegate um some spots might be filled by now if you are interested the sooner you speak up the better so to some of you you know as i've laid all this out you think why do i want to do this um to participate in the elections, to write resolutions, to give supporting testimony in defense of resolutions when the odds are stacked against you really making any progress towards wildlife reform. But consider, while the majority of the WCC might disagree with your position, your efforts may change a few minds and hearts. And that's a start and it's a victory. And committee meetings often, when you're at these committee meetings, they kind of have no filter. They blurt out plans and strategies. They're talking amongst each other. They kind of ignore uh, somebody they perceive as a wildlife advocate. And they discuss ways to increase hunting and trapping opportunities. I can get, like I said, no filter. They'll take your notes, contact your legislators, let them know that you don't approve of what was discussed and do it before the WCC gets sponsors for such of these bills, you know, beat them to the punch. I started attending WCC meetings around the year 2000. That was when the hunting of morning doves was on the spring hearing questionnaire. Uh, Vietnam vets came out in droves. The dove was the bird of peace and there was a lot of objection against it. They came out in drove. Of course, it got passed anyway, you can hunt doves. But anyway, so that was my first meeting. This meeting was led by a female warden and she asked, first thing she said was, she wanted to take care of some housekeeping chores first. And I thought, well, that's nice. I don't know where the bathroom is, that's good. But she said, she, she went on to say, she stated that bear hunters have been using, quote, small animals to train their bear dogs on for years. 
she asked for a show of hands to allow this practice to continue, to legitimize it. So these hands all shot up just like that. I sat around there. I looked at all these camo arms raised. Of course, mine wasn't. I just sat there. I sat there dumb, actually. And I thought, well, what kind of small animals are you thinking of? Are, I mean, you're talking kittens? And are the dogs killing them? I thought, I just, I just couldn't believe it. And I thought, I'm hearing wrong. But I didn't. So that was when the light bulb went on. In 2000, I was the only person not wearing camel. I was re greeted with unfriendly looks and a few grunts maybe. So from that point on, I came yearly. Um, gradually, the, I brought friends, anybody I could twist their arm and coming. Um, some came once and never came again. Others I got to come every year. But gradually the clothing changed from camo and they were wearing the kind of stuff you'd wear grocery shopping. I ran for the position of delegate every few years. I gave my three minute campaign speech. It always involves some variation of ethical hunting and wildlife concerns. Um, but they kind of, believe it or not, grew to pleasantly greet me. They'd say, oh, there you are. You know what I mean? Um, how are things with you? And, um, and they were respectful and they were even pr protective of my dissenting views. I remember once there was a, one of the delegates, um, I had a bear baiting issue that was going to pass in the county. I, I could tell I had support. This delegate, um, the county delegate um, started yelling at me about it. It should not pass. You could tell that people were on my side. And he, he um, yelled at me and oh, I kind of yelled back. Um, we sort of were, um, actually the chairman kind of had to break up our little squabble by reminding us that was not allowed. Um, and I presented it and I left because it just seemed better. Um, and um, a bear hunter, two bear hunters came out and followed me. And they said they were sorry for what had happened and how it was treated. And that delegate was bumped off that board. And so they are protective of dissenting views. Um, I, you know, I was elected as a delegate in 2019. I still am, you know, who knows if I'll be reelected again. The WCC chair of my county is an avid hunter, but he spoke of being an ethical hunter versus a shooter. He said the reason, he was the reason I always had hope in the WCC. He encouraged me to attend the WCC annual meeting and he told me they really do want to hear what you have to say. And I did. I found others like him at the WCC. So too many have dis dismissed the WCC as a waste of time. With Bondi, the old chair gone, who was an imperial ruler and a new chair, the WCC might be ripe for change, especially if we can get more of us wildlife advocates involved. Hunter Nation, Safari Club International, Wisconsin Bear Hunters Association, canned hunting ranches, wildlife killing contests, extreme antler growth products with trophy hunting, hounding, and an increase in guided hunts over food plots, showcases an affront to fair chase and sportsmanship. I believe most hunters viewed the February hunt as a shameful event, or I hope most of them did. Many ethical hunters still believe if you kill it, you should eat it. We have had the power all along. We have to look within ourselves. We've got to be willing to step outside of our comfort zone, shake off apathy for the greater good. Our presence as grassroots environmental advocates must be heard and felt to facilitate a change in the status quo. In solidarity with our wildlife, Diane and Jean, thank you very much for listening to me. Yay. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm turning my video back on. Sorry. Um, that was great. I just wanted to, if you don't mind, add a couple, uh, just give you my experience as well. It sounds oh, really please. complicated and it is. And Jean is like the mask. She's awesome. I know she's on here. She can mute if she wants she to is. not hide, but um, you know, I had a similar, uh, they were really against me and laughed me off until they got to know me when I was a delegate. And I actually met quite a few of hunters that would eventually maybe give me give me tips be like you know what they wouldn't stand up and say they're on my side of course not but you know they, they really were I mean my favorite guy 
that I worked with is a guy named Al. He's about 100 years old. He wore his NRA hat every time. And then we became kind of friends. It, friends is one, friends with everybody. But, you know, he would always tease me and be like, I got a bunch of wolf blood in the back of my truck, which sounds terrible. But, he, but it, it was because he became to respect me and respect the position. So you, I, I, was, I got surprised often by the, um, some people in there are just real assholes, but I was surprised at, uh, I was received well. And a lot of people do try to keep, um, keep that in a professional way. They really do. Um, they do. The other thing, do. I guess I had two more things to add. My resolution that I had to have pass, we have to pass it more than once, um, to get on this advisory is about giving wardens. So this is another thing you can do and why the WCC is powerful. Let's say <clears throat> I want to go to my representative and pass a law. Well, if I've already run it through the hunting community and they've agreed with me, that's really powerful to say, you know, I wrote this resolution and in Dane County, you know, it was voted in favor 10,000 to only 100. I can show that hunting community supports this. So that resolution that I have of mine that's on there that I wrote is giving wardens DNR trespass authority. Doesn't seem like it would have much to do with wolves or, or our cause. It absolutely does. Because I cannot track how often wardens are called out for trespass complaints with bear hounds. If I could show look how busy the wardens are with these trespassing dogs. That might help a legislator who maybe doesn't care about wildlife, but cares about private property rights. So there's all sorts of little things in there that I, you know, that we, I use and put in so that I can use them even in another avenue of my work um, mm -hmm. or all of our work. So, you know, if we could, I, I almost, you know, I guess that's what I'm stumbling on, but, you know, there's all sorts of things like that, but, you know, I passed a wildlife stamp bill asking for a, a way that non-consumptive users of wildlife could pay in, but you know, it, it's like, uh, you have to be representative too. It passed unanimously in all 72 counties. So then I was able to take that to Joel Cleefish of all the people in the world you don't want to work with. <laughs> but I was able to take that and, and I said, I already ran this through the hunting community and they support me and they support this. I was able to get a bipartisan bill. So that I think is another really good benefit of the Conservation Congress is that you can then, you know, run something through the worst of the worst people. <laughs> and I don't mean it that way, but I mean, the trophy hunters are in there. The people who like to bear hunt and wolf hunt, they're in there. If there's something you can find that we can agree on that would benefit wildlife and you run it through that, then you've already done almost all the work of instead of trying to go and find the ethical hunters on your own, you can go, you, they're coming to me essentially is the way I feel about it. Does that, did I say that right, Diane? Yeah, you, you, yes, the, definitely. Great. So, okay. Yes, and Trisha's right. Hunters are worried about being criticized by other hunters and being accused of siding with the antis. That's why so few will speak up, spot on. Yep, I know. It's true, it's true. Jean, um, did you want to add know. anything? I don't, I saw her name. Okay, Michelle, did you want to talk about um, passing, you know, asking people to pass a, a killing contest resolution in these, in these counties? Sure, I can, okay, I can give a, a little more detail. Um, you know, there's a lot of folks on here who are uh, experts way more than I am. And thanks, Diane, for that great explanation. That's kind of helping me get caught up to speed. So my understanding is that um, last year, three counties passed uh, resolutions to ban killing contests. That was Bayfield, just barely passed it, Dane and Milwaukee counties. So my understanding is that we need to get passage in at least those three counties two years in a row. So that's where we'd be focusing, but I don't see it hurting uh, to try and um, get this in, in other counties and do it wherever we can um, in case we don't get three counties, the, the same three counties this year and need to do it again next year. But it's worth exploring. So if you're interested, let me know. We've got language already drafted and um, Milwaukee and Dane counties passed pretty solidly, but Bayfield was close. 
So we might, um, one of the ideas I just got from all this talking was maybe we can find some ethical hunters who are against killing contests in Bayfield. Um, so if anybody knows anybody or anybody knows anybody who might know somebody, uh, we can kind of do the snowball grassroots kind of thing to, to find some people who might help build some awareness. Um, we've got to do this pretty quickly. Um, so that would be helpful. So just reach One out. One thing that might be helpful to you, Michelle, as a, as a, I've done this strategically, is in like in Diane's County and some of the really small counties, they're only, I mean, when they're, the meetings are in person, they're not now, they're online. But, um, and even into the future, I assume we're going to go back to normal someday or close, well, you know what I mean. Um, if you can get seven people to go with you, you can pass it in your county because only seven people are at the meeting in that county. Mm -hmm. So that's another too. If you're in a small county, like let me know and I can reach out and find people that even if you don't know them. Um, so even in the smaller counties, not even that many people will be voting online from those smaller counties. So sometimes it's only like, what was that one, Diane? It was like only seven people to one because they didn't know I was coming. So that's another thing too, um, is in the smaller counties, you actually might have success because you're only having to, to drag, you know, essentially 10 people to agree with you and you can pass the resolution in that county. So there's ways to be real sneaky about it too. That's my specialty. So <laughs> cool. I like that. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. So anyone who's interested, uh, let me know. Um, and I put my email in the chat. So give me an email and we'll, uh, we'll plot and be sneaky. That's it. Michelle, would you like us to just put a link on our advocacy tools page to the killing contest or to Project Coyote, so they can get in touch with you easier there. Yeah, that would be that great. Works. Okay, yeah. I will add it to the to do list. Awesome. So, Michelle, okay. I mean, Michelle, you're in Bayfield, you said? No, I'm not, but one of the advocates that I work closely with, Cynthia, she's in Bayfield, and so she's been doing this for a while and then has been organizing a lot of the resolutions in past years. Okay, so if we can have some email, like you said, or something, I have a friend of mine who actually lives in Minnesota but has a home in Bayfield. Maybe she would be interested. I mean, I can ask. I'm not really sure. Yeah. But she may be another one. That would be great. I know a ton of ethical hunters in Bayfield County. Okay. Tons. Great. So another thing you might we could do too is contact the tribe, uh, Redcliffe, and they are in Bayfield County. And you know, we can I can send a quick introductory email, Waukesha County, if that would be good. Um uh, and, you know, we try to get some coalitions in those ones, you know, it is hard to do statewide, but if we can narrow it down, like you're asking, I have time for that. I don't, I can't do the whole, I can't do the whole thing. So, um, but anybody that's having any questions or anything, I think can feel free to reach out to me or Diane. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Hi, I'm Lois. Hi, Lois. I just came in. Oh, I, I can barely hear you, Lois. I missed, I just came in. Oh, hi. Thank you, Michelle. Makai just uh, texted me oh, great. Um, about your, your chat. So um, I just wanted to let you know I'm in and listening. And Good. Welcome. Thank you, and thank you. We're happy to have you. Thanks, Makai. <laughs> okay. So I guess that was the, um, I don't know if Amy is on the call too. Um, I don't think Jody made it. I, she just texted me. Jody was going to talk about the um, working. Uh, she's doing a lot of work with working with the governor's office, um, but I think she was not able to join. So I, we're gonna have a lot of free time here. Amy, do you want to kind of just give? I know you sent me that really cool PowerPoint presentation. I thought maybe we could talk about, um, you know, tactics or projects. Do you think uh, our organization should take on? Um, um, sure. Yeah, you know what I was, you know, all of your really ideas, some of them we've done before, but things have changed. So I thought there were really, you had a really a lot of really neat ideas. So I thought maybe you could talk about that when we get the conversation going that way. Sure, sure. Perfect. So um, I think like everybody on this call, it's it's been a really rough couple weeks, right? So I'm trying to, I tell myself in my head, it goes like this, right? Turn this pain into purpose. And um, my background's marketing. And so, um, I wanted to uh, just put together a quick list of just, I guess, kind of ideas on how maybe we could 
you know, kind of formulate uh, a plan to increase awareness, increase education, you know, kind of build out this group um, and, and definitely try to band together and create whatever positive impact we can, particularly before November, but long term as well. Um, matter of fact, I will, um, Michelle, if you don't mind, I'll share my screen and I can bring up the PowerPoint if, if that's cool. Um, otherwise, I don't, actually, I might not be able to. Um, but let me you just can't share your screen. Do you want? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think you might have disabled. That's okay. No worries. No, I I, where are you? Um, where are you on the list? Are you in the A's? Oh, um, <laughs> oh I found I should be. I should be under uh, more. Um, you should be able to now. Yes. Oh. Hang on one second. Give it just a minute. No problem. Can you now? Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yay, okay. Great. Okay. So, um, Cool, let me just um, get that PowerPoint going. Um, Sorry, I didn't put it on the spot. It was just No, a, I'm good. I, I'm actually, I'm happy to jump into it. This is, Wonderful. this is what I do. I mean, so let's open this up and share it with you guys and see what you think. I mean, honestly, I'm all about trying to just pull together people where you might be interested or where you might have some um, traction or skills or, or thoughts on this. Um, so I put this together. Um, give me a thumbs up.